Okay guys, so we're going to continue our discussion of the central limit theorem. And last time we talked a little bit about how when we have our population distributed as a normal distribution, and then we start taking a sample size. So we take like a sample size of n equals, oh, I don't know, 10 or something. What happens for distribution of the sample is that the sample means get tighter and tighter close about the mean. Now the mean of the population and of the sample distribution are the same. So let's write that out real quick. So it's going to be capital X, so that's our population distribution, is going to be normal and it's going to be mu and sigma squared, or the variance. And our, so that would be, call this the distribution of x, of capital X, and then this narrower one that we were working on is the distribution of x bar. And we can say that that's distributed normally with the mean of mu, and this time it's going to be sigma squared, but with respect to x bar. And we talked a little bit about how to calculate that just as a review. Sigma with respect to x bar is just equal to the original population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, now we've talked about this in a limited aspect about how the, what happens when we take a population distribution, the normal distribution, and then look at the sample distribution. But what the central limit theorem, what is so amazing about it is that it works with any population distribution. Our population distribution could look like some squiggly thing like this. It could look like a uniform, but wherever that mean is, wherever that mean is, if we take a large enough sample size, that's the key thing. If our sample size is large enough, the distribution of the sample means, or of x bar, will be normally distributed about that same mean. Now up here when we were talking about with the population distribution of being normally distributed we didn't say anything about the sample size because it doesn't matter. You can have a small sample size, you can have a large sample size. But if our underlying distribution that's x is not normal then we need to have a sample size of basically greater than 30. Some people say greater than or equal to 30. We'll just leave it as greater than 30. That's how big our sample size needs to be. If that is true, no matter what the underlying distribution is, so let's say our distribution here is uniform, and we're given a maximum and a minimum, so we're given like 1, 6, right? All we have to do is figure out, well, what is the mean and what's the standard deviation, and then we can say that it's going to be that the sample means are going to be normally distributed as long as we have a big enough sample size. So as long as our sample size is like 36 or something. So even if our distribution is like this, our normal distribution, or our uh, the distribution of the sample mean will always be normally distributed given that the sample size is large enough. And so what's cool is that uh, the equation that we actually use is still the same. So it's going to be this, we're still talking about z-scores, equal, and we're doing x bar minus mu divided by sigma with respect to the sample mean. So remember, we can always go back to this calculation, but this is basically identical to what we've been doing in our previous section. The only change is, is now instead of talking about a single observation, we're talking about a sample mean. And instead of talking about the population standard deviation, we're talking about the standard deviation with respect to the sample mean. It works with, no with any type of distribution. We just have a minimum sample size that we have to reach if the population distribution is not normally distributed.